Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. As we look around the globe, we're considering the topic of soil health, something that we very rarely ever think about, uh, seldom discuss, and at the same time, it's critical as it is the building block for all life on planet Earth. We have a gentleman who has dedicated his life to this. This is Samir Sachdeva. He is an engineer, field agricultural research scientist, all about soil health in the country of India in Maharashtra state in Baramati, which is the name of the district in which he lives. And Samir, welcome to the Emerald Planet TV. Thanks a lot. It's my pleasure to be here with you on it, Sam. Glad to have you here about soil health. And then you have this very bold statement, soils are under threat. Why is that the case? And why do we even need to be thinking about soils in relationship to all living beings on planet Earth? See, if you look at it, soils are the basic to all uh, living beings to the Earth. And in the last 60, 70 years, we have not taken care of soil, which is the building block for all humans and animals in the planet. And now is the time we have to take care of the soils because they are under threat. Yeah, and this is something we're going to be discussing uh, in this particular show about soil issues, how it impacts humans, plants, animals, and the microorganisms and the health of all four of these living beings here on planet Earth. Uh, but we're going to look at some of the challenges that we have as far as the soils. And uh, we see a beautiful pastoral scene, uh, the grass, the cattle, uh, the mountains in the background, the, uh, the trees uh, growing right up to where the, the cattle are. Uh, but we're not even thinking about the soil. Why don't we think about soil? I think in the world which we are living today, uh, children and people eat food, but where is it coming from? They don't understand that. So that is the basic problem, that we don't consider soil as a living thing and that is supporting life. Mm -hmm. And that is the journey is all about, how do we educate people? Yeah, that's critically important. And industrial activity, this is something that of course is going on across all of India, uh, the United States, both of our countries have uh, rapidly growing populations, uh, but this is happening worldwide. How does industrial activity really negatively impact the soil? So there are two things. If you look at it, if soil is not productive, we can have an industrial activity there. But if it is a productive soil and we do an industrial activity there, then we are breaking the top layer of the soil, which is productive and we are destroying it. So that should not be done. I'm not saying industrial activity is not required, but yes, be more cautious in terms of what. Right. And moving in deforestation, this is something that many people actually do think about, particularly we talk about various places on the African continent, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, places where we're removing the mango groves. And then of course, Amazonia in the middle of Brazil. So deforestation, how does that directly relate to the loss of soils, but also the loss 
of the nutrients and the ability to sequester carbon. So basically, I think uh, when we expense, we expose the soil to the atmosphere and the sunlight, so whatever nutrients are there in the soil gets exposed to the atmosphere. And with heat and light, they get released into the atmosphere. So soils will have carbon in them, but once we expose the soil to sunlight and temperature, that carbon will get converted into CO2 and get released into the atmosphere. So that is how soils get deteriorated. Yeah, you know, and looking at this impact as far as agriculture is concerned, this is we're focusing on food production and uh, feeding a population base that's growing by, uh, you know, leaps and bounds, possibly 9 billion people on planet Earth by 2038. Uh, but the very agricultural practices we're using to feed people actually is helping to destroy the food supply. That's absolutely right. So first picture over here is soil compaction. If you compact the soil, the absorption level of soil for air and water goes down and the production of food will be less. Mm -hmm. Salinity on account of construction of dams and canals. So we are storing water and then putting it back into the soil, which needs to be done. I'm not saying it, it has to be done, mm -hmm. but we are adding a lot of salt into the soil. This also happens on account of usage of large set of inorganic fertilizers we are putting back into the soil. Mm -hmm. And then soil erosion. This happens by, we are just cutting off trees and all exposing soil. So if there is a heavy rainfall, then the top layer of the soil gets eroded. Mm -hmm. So these are the basic uh, physical parameters of soil which needs to be corrected. Right. Yeah, and this is something that uh, we need to really be uh, conscious of and, and concerned about. Uh, living soils versus, in essence, uh, very poor or non-performing, non-living soils. What is the difference to the plants, but also a uh, difference as far as food production for a planet that really is rapidly going to 9 billion people? Right. Uh, so what we say over here is a living soil will have a lot of nutrient in it, which a plant can uptake. Later, that plant will feed uh, humans with the same nutrient which is there in the soil. Mm -hmm. So living soils will result in a healthy plant which will have more nutrient in it. It will have healthy food which we as humans and animals would consume and will stay healthy. So everything is correlated. So living soils are important for plant health and plant health is important for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is something we really don't think much about as far as uh, the plants being healthy themselves and then the nutrients they're bringing to us. But this uh, is a very profound statement, healthy soil, healthy plants, healthy you. How do we know and why is it so important that we understand this direct link? So the direct link on this is that uh, whatever nutrition is required by humans. So in terms of medical sciences, everybody is on a pill of a calcium or a zinc or say decasul or vitamins. But if we eat healthy plants, which are coming from healthy soil, then our requirement of having pills every day in the morning will go down. So what we are saying is that eat healthy, eat natural, and stay healthy and fit. Mm -hmm. Now, the old adage, of course, is we are what we eat. And the very ancient statement is this food is medicine. How do we get this across to people to realize that both of these are truisms, that we need to think about these? We are what we eat, and food is medicine. I think uh, what we need to do is start educating people I'll just make a statement. So India is supposed to be the diabetic capital of the world. And Indian soils are very poor on two basic elements, which is called zinc and magnesium. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot of literature on the internet saying that a diabetic disease happened because of lack of magnesium and zinc. So mm -hmm. it is correlated. So we need to make sure that we have the right uh, selection of food and fruit uh, but also that we're making sure that we're taking care 
of the soil that's actually pr producing that. Uh, the soil forgotten miracle. Why do we call this the forgotten miracle? In the last 70, 80 years, we have not considered soil what it is or what it should be. Going back in ancient India, if you look at it, the way the agriculture was being done, soils were considered to be very, very, very important. But that importance over a period of time has deteriorated. For us, for our children, food is going to a mall or a food store and picking it up. Where that milk and food has come, the children today are not even aware of. So we need to start educating kids now the importance of soil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also the earlier uh, that we can educate them. I mean, even in babyhood, they need to understand the dependency on plants, on trees, uh, on the microorganisms, how all of this is part of the cycle of life. Uh, looking at the soil organic carbon, what does that really mean? And you have these three benefits. Explain for us what these three benefits are. So whatever we've been talking of in terms of soil health, everything correlates and goes back to having SOC, which is soil organ carbon into the soil. So soil organic carbon, if it is there in the soil, then we have benefits that the microbiological activity of a soil will go up. Mm -hmm. That is what I say, biological. Right. Physical is it. Physically, that of organic carbon is high in soil, then the compaction percentage, salinity, all these things will get reduced. Chemical benefit, if organic carbon is there in the soil up to the optimum level, then whatever nutrient are there in the soil, they will break down into atoms which are more in available form for a plant. Now, if uh, and let me ask this question. So if these uh, chemicals and uh, the nutrients are readily available for the plants, does that necessarily have a direct correlation that they'll be readily available for the humans or the cattle that are going to be eating it? Definitely, these nutrients will be available. If the plant has got more nutrient in it and what we consume, we will be consuming more nutrient, which is in available form. Mm -hmm. And we don't need substitutes in terms of medicine to be consumed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very so important. A... Right. Okay. Now, looking at uh, this gentleman, one of your Indian farmers, uh, as far as what is he seeing as far as soil health is concerned? And why is it so important that he feel like that we really are taking care of the soil? What, his future is linked to our future. Is that correct? That's absolutely right. So this is a basically a plight of a farmer in India today. So he is looking at gods. So agriculture in India has, you're looking at the sky as to when the water will come, what will happen. But he is not realizing it. What he is sitting on is a gold mine. If he takes care of after the soil, then most of the things will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going out on uh, the logo here, soil health. We have about uh, 15, 20 seconds. What do you see for people being aware of increasing attention to soil health over the next five, 10 or 15 years? So I think uh, it is for people like us, we need to talk about soil health to more number of people, whether it's government bodies, whether it's institutes, whether it's agriculturists, whether they're students. Even if we take few students from school going taking them back into the farm and sh showcasing them as to why exactly soil is important so that is something which will create awareness on soil health which is more important at this point of time. Mm -hmm. that sounds good thank you for being with us samir sashtiva uh, he's a field agriculture research scientist thank you for being with us as we create the emerald planet thanks a lot it was a pleasure to be with you, Sam, today. Thanks a lot.